this listener is asking me help for pain in the lower legs and feet. Actually, I'm going to combine two questions and and give you the answer to both questions in one response. So, uh, she said, I want to ask you about one health issue, which is really common among me and my friends. I work 8 to 10 hours a day doing installations and repair. We are required to wear work boots for safety, but after 8 hours, you feel this annoying pain in the feet and lower legs when you come home from work all the way to sleep time. I bought most the most comfortable work boots I can afford. It also drains your energy and and will um, and will will to do some exercise after. Um, not 100% sure what she's conveying there. Maybe she's doing some exercises after. Yeah, and then she says it always seems like you feel tired. What do you recommend for this? Could it be candida? And then the other guy says I have really bad cramps in my feet for years, and I'm wondering if it is gout. Just wondering if you know a way to prevent it. Okay, so I'm going to kind of answer both of those at the same time. My response, this is a hard one to be certain about, particularly the first question she said, where she's getting pain in her legs and feet after work. Um, if you're getting, if your feet are burning, if your feet are burning, okay, that is most likely the liver needing detoxed. Okay, now I've sent out, you can just key in liver, in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com, I, I gave out the liver detox not too long ago. I posted it on the PDF. You should be able to find it. Um, there's a cheap liver detox you can do. Okay, The only thing you're going to need to buy is choline and some other things like lemon juice and Epsom salts and olive oil. Um, cost effective, you know, get the job done type of thing. Now, um, feet pain, but usually centered in the big toe, is usually gout, or can be gout, okay, particularly the, the big toe. Now, a uric acid test is the best way to know this for gout. It's the only real definitive way to know it. They, they stay on these toxic drugs that don't do anything to really clear the uric acid out. It, it's just they're horrific drugs for gout. And um, gout is just high uric acid in the system, and it feels like ground glass in the joints, and you'll get swelling of the big toe, pain. It also likes the thumbs, now, the thumbs, if you think about it, are kind of like the equivalent of the big toes on the feet, you know? And so, it loves the thumbs, it loves the big toes, it also likes the feet if it gets bad enough, and it can go up into the lower legs. I've even seen it get into the knee. I've seen it also get into the elbow and the shoulder. Some people really get it, in, they get it in their shoulders. So, gout isn't just confined to the big toe. It can literally go from shoulder to hands and from knees to feet. So, uric acid test, or what you could do, another thing some people have had good results with, is the black cherry juice. Uh, you can get it most health food stores. You can try that first. Now, if you notice a appreciable difference by doing black cherry juice, but that would kind of be expensive to do a lot of that every day because it's kind of a specialty item. Uh, you could probably really end up blowing, not blowing, but spending a ton of money if you were just if you had to consume a lot of black cherry juice all the time, uh, AC carbamide would probably be a better alternative. If you had a really really stubborn case and the AC carbamide wasn't doing it, you would take a product from Standard Process called Arginex. Add that in there as well. That's your gout protocol: black cherry juice, AC carbamide, Arginex. At worst case scenario, you'd have to take that. I've seen guys saw a guy come in one time when I was first in practice. And this guy literally should have been in an emergency room. This guy was in so much pain. He was doubled over. I mean, he was in absolute total agony. Worst gout attack I had ever seen in my life. We put him on 20 AC carbamide. And when you take AC carbamide, you want to make sure you drink it with a lot of water. Um, like you'd want to do like five capsules four times a day with a large glass of water. And it, what it does is it flushes all that uric acid, excess uric acid, out of the system. Obviously, you want to avoid rich foods at that time as well. High protein and rich foods are what bring about gout attacks. So, uh, within one day, he walked in one day later, he looked like a totally new man. You couldn't even told, told he was, he was even hurting at all. It was totally gone. One, one day on 20 AC carbine, one day. And you have to understand, a lot of people say, 20 AC, oh, you're an overdose. No, these are food products. These are whole food products, um, mostly like organic food products, grown on their own, uh, I think it's like a thousand acre ranch in Palmyra, Wisconsin. Most of the foods are grown. Low-till organic farming. 
and they, and they encapsulate them in a capsule. And in order to get a therapeutic effect from a nutrient, you have to take a therapeutic dose. A lot of times people think it's just like a drug. Oh, I can just take one and I'll be fine. No, you cannot do that with whole food products. If you have a really serious problem, sometimes you have to load up on it at the beginning, get yourself out of the woods, and then sometimes you can go off it totally. Sometimes you might need a maintenance dosage. Drugs are the exact opposite. You typically will take a lower dose at the beginning, and as your body starts to adapt to that drug, and as that drug fills receptors in your body, it doesn't work as well anymore. So you have to take more of the same drug to keep getting the same effect. And then that drug has side effects, so you have to take more drugs. And then all the meanwhile, your liver and your kidneys and a lot of the systems of your body are becoming more toxic because it can't get rid of all these toxins, these pharmaceuticals. So, um, okay, so that's, that's that one for gout. Now, if it's a circulatory issue causing the lower leg pain and foot pain, you could have a peripheral artery test. Go to lifelinescreening.com, peripheral artery exam. They can do this pretty cheap to see if there's any occlusion in the arteries. If there are, let's say you had plaquing. Let's say you had high blood sugar, which sets you up for that. Well, then what you're going to want to do is um, go on some type of blood sugar protocol to, to deal with that. Um, probably the best protocol I know of for blood sugar is, is um, I think it's called Gluco Response. Okay, so the best protocol I know of for blood sugar is uh, Gluco Defense by Innate. And they just came out with this product. It's fantastic. It, it's got vanadium. It's got... Uh, Chromium GTF, it's got, I mean, everything you could, the cinnamon, I mean, it's got like everything you could want in a blood sugar product. It's, it's amazing. Now, if you have, let's say if you have diabetes, I would add in uh, Cytozyme Pan by Biotics. And that is a neonatal cow glandular that actually helps to rebuild the pancreas. So, because of the bleaching process of sugar and flour, ever since the early 1900s, it has created a, a, a byproduct called alaxin that burns out the what they're, they're known as either the beta cells or the islets of Langerhans of the, of the pancreas, which is what produces insulin. Okay? So... Anytime you eat anything bleached, okay, bleached flour, bread of any nature, bleached sugar, you're getting this alaxin chemical which will fry the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas which will eventually take away your ability to secrete insulin properly and eventually you go type 2 diabetic and then a lot of people go on meds at that point, glucophage or whatever, and then they end up going on insulin shots, okay. I think the best protocol, the simplest protocol I've come against, come up with for diabetes is, um, let's say if you have blood sugar issues, I would just say the uh, Gluco Defense by an 8, okay, professional line that um, I've recommended many times. And mm, one capsule twice a day, okay. It's not cheap, but it's the best I know of. And then the if, if you still have, a, let's say you literally are diabetic, I would add in Cytosine Pan um, one tablet twice a day. So one of each twice a day. Or if you have a really bad case, one of each with meals. Okay, so you do three of each per day. So that's what I would say. If you had plaquing, and there's two ways to determine that. Probably the best way is a Doppler ultrasound of the carotid arteries. Again, you can go to lifelinescreening.com. See in your area if you can get that screening test. Doppler ultrasound of the carotid, carotid arteries will tell you if you're plaqued up. Also, peripheral, peripheral vascular exam of the um, lower legs can tell you if there's plaquing. If you have a lot of blood sugar issues... A lot of times people ha start to have circulatory issues in the legs, particularly diabetics. This is why diabetics have to, a lot of times, end up getting their foot amputated because they lose all circulation in the foot. It, it progresses to that point. That can all cause pain. Okay, so again, this is that's what I'm saying. Like, this one question could mean a lot of things. The pain could be coming from a lot of areas, as you can see. So it depends. Now, um, if you did have plaquing, 
and let's say it was advanced, the best way to go, if you can afford it, would be the EDTA chelation therapy, and I've talked about this in a recent teaching, intravenous. It's not fun. You have a nice big cath needle in you for, uh, catheter needle in you for an hour or two. Anywhere from 20 to 40 sessions, depending on how placked up you are, 100 to 150 bucks a pop. It's not cheap, okay? If it wasn't that advanced and you want, and you couldn't afford it, you could also go with the EDTA chelation and natokinase. Uh, you can find both of those at like herbspro.com. Natokinase, um, you want to take it on an empty stomach. It'll help with the circulation. It'll also help to deplaque you. And the EDTA chelation, oral chelation, you take that also on an empty stomach once a day, like three capsules. So it's a less aggressive way, but it's also much cheaper. A lot of people can afford it. So if you had placking and that was causing the circulatory issues into the legs, that could do it. If it was just purely a circulatory issue in the legs and placking wasn't involved, you could use a product by standard process called Circuplex. Circuplex, which would help with that condition if placking wasn't involved. Okay, because it just increases circulation. It's a capsule. Uh, kind of a real niche product. So, then, also, foot pain could also be plantar fasciitis. Um, could be heel spurs. A lot of these things, like heel spurs and plantar fasciitis, can be greatly helped with ultrasound treatments. Um, if it was a heel spur involved, ultrasound with FOS food, by standard process... In the ultrasound gel would be the ultimate way to go because you would literally be driving the FOS food into the heel spur and dissolving it that way. Um, that's probably the ultimate. I've, I've dissolved heel spurs in my practice doing that, and I mean they're 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 gone pretty short order. Uh, it's pretty amazing. And, but see again, you're never going to hear this stuff from a podiatrist because he doesn't make his money that way. He doesn't know about it, but he doesn't make his money that way either. Okay, and I'm not saying all podiatrists are corrupt. I'm just saying that. There's no financial interest to find natural cures in the medical field when they're making five, six thousand, two thousand bucks a procedure. That's their bread and butter. So I'm just saying in general. I'm not. I don't want to, you know, paint everybody that way. So um, ultrasound could be if it was plantar fasciitis or heel spur pain causing foot pain. Uh, you can also take FOS food by standard process internally, and that will also help dissolve the hospur as well. Now, low magnesium could also cause the conditions you were describing, especially if cramping is involved. Remember the one guy had asked me about cramping in his feet? I always will start with magnesium whenever I have any kind of cramp case. Now, cramps can be really, really complicated too. That can involve phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, it can involve that F factor that I talked about before, driving the, uh, I mean, it's, cramping cases can be really, really complicated as well, but I always start with magnesium, I'm trying to make this as easy as possible, even though I know I'm giving you a lot of answers, um, the best, easiest, cheapest way to go about this would be try soaking your feet in a hot Epsom salt bath after work for at least 20 minutes. Now, you may find, if you do this for a few nights, wow, I'm not having all that pain in my legs at the end of the day. I feel a lot better. And you might be able to, you might only need to do it every few days. The Epsom salts are basically pure magnesium. And you will, if it's a hot Epsom salt bath, you will absorb a lot of that magnesium through your skin. Your skin can absorb things, okay? Um, it's the largest organ of the body, and it's highly capable of, of, of absorbing things, that's why if you take a chlorinated shower without a shower filter, you're absorbing a lot of the chlorine and even fluoride through the skin and inhaling it too. It's like you're being gassed. That's why I always recommend one of those shower filters. Don't get just the charcoal kind. Get the, um, oh, I believe it's the KDF filters. The, the uh, charcoal filters won't work very well with high heat like in a shower, but the KDF will, KDF media. You can find them at most, uh, like Lowe's. I don't go, advise going to Home Depot because they're so uh, their their gay agenda friendly thing is off the scale. So I like Lowe's or a local local hardware store if you can find them. Some, some of the times when going to a local hardware store, you're not, you're not going to have the selection. But um, 
I always like to support local businesses whenever I can, if they have it. You're going to pay a little bit more, but you're also getting away from giving your money to these big brother corporations. So um, I would do that. Um, try soaking your feet, hot Epsom salt bath, for, or, or just a whole, if you do, you, you want to take a hot Epsom salt bath in general. Now, if you do that, you have to understand something. You should only have one goal after that bath, and that's getting in bed and going to sleep because you're going to feel like a bowl of, of jello when you get out of a hot Epsom salt bath. Okay, um, It's very relaxing because the magnesium is very, very relaxing. It's a sign that you just have absorbed a big dose of magnesium, and that's something that a lot of us are deficient in. Um, so... Uh, and so that's, that's, this can work wonders. Just the Epsom salt bath by itself. It might be all you need in a lot of these cases. Epsom salt is also good for balancing calcium in the body. Uh, it would actually be good for most of the things I just described. Whether it was gout or whether it was circulatory issues. or It really could help all of those conditions. It may not be the source thing of what's causing it. But it is likely and prone to help any kind of um, really joint pain in general. And then she asked about the candida relating to the leg pain or maybe the tiredness. Um, and I said, I don't think the leg pain is related to candida, but candida can cause fatigue. And um, the uh, you can see my, my attachment. I think I did on, uh, it was last week on candida, the, the protocol, or, or one of the times before on candida, the protocol with the mild silver protein. What you need for candida is you need a, um, a little bit of the silver. If you're doing 5,000 parts per million, you probably need 30 drops twice a day to start out with. And you need a good flora to repopulate the intestinal tract with the good flora that competes with the candida. Okay, Really good one I found is that Innate, the Innate brand, the 2040 2014 is a really good one. You do about one capsule a day. You might want to start out with a little bit more to repopulate your intestinal tract. You always do that on an empty stomach. Don't do it with food. You want it to get into the intestinal tract undigested. And uh, you really need both to, to address candida, I've found, the silver and the flora. Uh, 